Hey guys, Robbie here from Across the Top, and today we're gonna to talk about what really causes heartburn and how you can fix it for good. So heartburn is one of the most common digestive elements that people are dealing with today. Uh, it goes by a lot of different names, gastroesophageal reflux disease, or heartburn, or acid reflux. All of these things in one way or another are uh, a family of conditions or a family of sort of uh, symptoms that uh, share a common root and we're going to talk today about what that common root is and what actually causes these things now what's interesting is you might be surprised to know that the most often cited reason for acid reflux or for um, heartburn if you ask someone on the street what causes heartburn they'd say excess stomach acid that's the reason turns out in the vast majority of cases that's not true in all but an extremely small minority of cases, too little stomach acid is the cause of heartburn and acid reflux um, and you know gastroesophageal reflux disease. Um, part of the way you can intuitively see this, just by the way, um, you know this this does have exceptions to it, but a broad trend is the following that helps people to see this. So, our stomach acid production is perhaps the highest it is in our entire life, or, or, or entire lives around the time that we're teenagers. And it's uh, one of the lowest it can possibly be. Uh, our stomach acid level is around the time that we become seniors, that we get above age 60. Now, let's ask the following question. How many teenage, teenagers do you know with acid reflux versus how many uh, older people and seniors do you know with acid reflux? I'm willing to bet you're gonna say that there are quite a few more older people than younger people with acid reflux. And part of the reason is that stomach acid production actually decreases as we age and can lead to um, reflux. So today we're gonna about talk about the actual cause of reflux, how you can fix it, why it is that heartburn drugs and supplements actually seem to make the problem better, but they in reality make it worse, um, and what you can do as an alternative. Okay. So let's start out with something really, really important, just a fundamental principle, something that I think is a real hallmark of functional medicine or holistic medicine, as opposed to sometimes the way standard Western medicine of practice, stomach acid is good for you. Stomach acid is not in your body to harm you. The idea that you would chronically take these acid suppressing drugs or supplements as many, many, many people today are, um, the idea that you would take those things long term and just have that be part of your regular life just fundamentally misses the fact that stomach acid is good for you. It's there in your body for a reason, just like cholesterol is there in your body for a reason, just like insulin is there in your body for a reason. These things aren't there to harm you. Can things go wrong with them? Of course, absolutely, if things are not under the right uh, conditions or circumstances. But that being said, stomach acid is good for you. It is meant to um, help your body function as needed. What does it do? Well, it breaks down food, although digestion proper, where you actually absorb nutrients, doesn't take place in the stomach, it takes place in the small intestine, uh, mostly, and then uh, later somewhat in, in the large intestine, but it helps break down the food for that process in the small intestine and the large intestine to eventually happen. Number two, it kills path pathogens. This is really, really important. You know, the main way that stuff from the outside world gets into our body on a daily basis is eating food. And a lot of stuff in the outside world can be harmful to us if it's not properly sanitized. The pH of your stomach is typically a level two. Now, if you're not familiar with the pH scale, basically um, zero to seven is more acidic, uh, and then seven and above is more alkaline or basic. Um, seven basically being neutral or water. Two, like the further you go down from seven, closer to zero, the more and more acidic you get. Two is extremely acidic. And that's both to break down your food, but also to kill any sort of uh, viruses or bacteria or any other type of pathogens that might enter your body that your body just doesn't want there. So if you take acid suppressing drugs, you run the real risk, uh, and there are double blind placebo controlled studies showing this, you run the real risk of um, getting an infection as a result of having too little stomach acid. <clears throat> if your if the contents of your stomach once it goes to the small intestine is not properly acidic enough 
you will not get the requisite digestive enzymes that are supposed to be released into the small intestine to help you digest your food. So, you know, basically if your body doesn't get the signal that, hey, the stuff coming from the stomach is acidic enough, it won't release the digestive enzymes necessary to break down your food. And that will lead to excessive fermentation, basically, you know, uh, bacterial uh, consumption of the food that you just ate, and it can lead to gas, bloating, and reflux. So stomach acid is really, really important from that perspective because um, it helps your body release certain digestive enzymes. Stomach acid is also tremendously important for nutrient absorption. Uh, if you don't have enough stomach acid, you are not absorbing the requisite nutrients from your food. So stomach acid is tremendously important, and this whole idea Again, of you know, we all know these over-the-counter drugs that you can buy for this stuff. We all know the ones that doctors prescribe. The idea that you would use these things on a regular basis to perpetually decrease stomach acid, which is there to help you, is just totally backwards. Now, in some cases, it may be necessary for symptom control, but it should never be done solely for symptom control without looking for the underlying cause. So what is actually uh, causing heartburn or reflux or gastroesophageal reflux disease? So all of these things are usually caused by too little stomach acid. Now I know, you might be saying that's the exact opposite of what I've heard. Well, you know, just like with people saying that, you know, egg yolks aren't good for you and vegetable oils are healthy for you and grains are healthy for you um, and saturated fat will kill you, all these different things that we've heard over the past uh, 30 to 40 years from um, you know, top nutritional uh, folks, uh, or at least folks that are um, you know, part of the government and uh, giving us uh, these USDA recommendations has been uh, mistaken in a lot of ways. And a lot of these uh, entities, just by the way, recently have, have changed their attitude, like the American Heart Association has recently changed its attitude on saturated fat and cholesterol, and so on and so forth. So, this is probably surprising, at least a little bit, but it is in fact true. So how does too little stomach acid lead to reflux? Well, what happens is when you have too little stomach acid, food doesn't get broken down properly, number one. When it doesn't get broken down properly, um, that can potentially lead to excessive fermentation when it reaches your small intestine and then eventually your large intestine, which has the most amount of uh, bacteria uh, of any part of your digestive system, the large intestine in particular. The other thing is that too little stomach acid leads to not enough digestive enzymes released um, by your pancreas to eventually help digest your food in the small intestine, which again can lead to excess of fermentation. Um, and this excess gas, this excess fermentation that goes on, pushes back up uh, into the stomach and eventually up into your esophagus and it can lead to reflux. One of the most common causes of acid reflux is a, is a pathogen called H. pylori. H. pylori is a type of bacteria that survives in your stomach. How? By reducing the stomach acid content. That makes it more hospitable. If there's a lot of stomach acid, it doesn't want to live there. But if there's a lot less, it takes your pH of your stomach acid from about 2 to about 7, which is, you know, neutral right around the level of water. So let's ask the following question. If heartburn were mostly caused by excessive uh, stomach acid, why would it be the case that something like H. pylori, uh, a very common gut pathogen, which is a very uh, common cause of heartburn, why would that cause heartburn? Why would it cause heartburn if what it's really doing is lowering the stomach acid production? Well, it's because of the reason I just cited. Now, are there cases where, um, where you can have excess stomach acid? Absolutely. Uh, it's extraordinarily rare. It's extraordinarily rare. And if you look at the studies on this, uh, the vast majority of people with um, heartburn and reflux have too little stomach acid. Um, you know, if you're talking to your doctor about potentially being put on this stuff, ask them for a stomach acid test. Ask about, you know, how are you so sure that my stomach acid is really uh, high? Because this is important to know. These these drugs, it's not just that they may make, uh, they may not actually fix the issue, it's that they're actually making the issue worse 
and they lead to poor nutrient absorption and breakdown of food and they can lead to you getting uh, gut pathogens. So they're really not that great and, and you want to make sure that if you have to take these things for some reason, whether it's symptom control or whatnot, that you know and understand what the reason is and you have, you have objective evidence that your stomach acid is too high. It is often, all too often, commonly assume that your stomach acid is too high when it really isn't, when it really isn't. So now that we understand what the cause is of too little stomach acid, uh, or excuse me, we understand what the cause is of heartburn, which is too little stomach acid, um, we need to understand that heartburn pills actually make heartburn worse. They actually make the problem worse. So uh, how do they do that? They do that by reducing your stomach acid. They do that by neutralizing your stomach acid. And um, this is really, really not good, again, because of the things I talked about before. Um, one of the things to keep in mind is that even the FDA currently warns against prolonged use of proton pump inhibitors and acid blocking drugs. And when acid blocking drugs originally came out, it was recommended that they be taken for absolutely no longer than six to eight weeks. Now, of course, with uh, prolonged lobbying from the drug companies and other uh, forces out there, uh, this eventually went away. But there's a push now, again, to uh, say that this you know, leads to really uh, bad health consequences. So you want to make sure that you're not taking this stuff for too long. If you take proton pump inhibitors for acid blocking drugs for too long, you can actually lose the ability to produce stomach acid and you might have to take betaine HCL for the rest of your life, which is basically supplemental stomach acid. Now, the question I always get here when people hear this is they say, okay, that sounds great, Robbie. I understand what you're saying. Um, why would it be the case that if excess, uh, or excuse me, why would it be the case that if too little stomach acid is the cause behind heartburn, why would it be the case that people take proton pump inhibitors. Why do they feel better when they take proton pump inhibitors? Well, I will absolutely 100% grant that people get symptom relief from taking proton pump inhibitors because essentially what proton pump inhibitors do is they neutralize any stomach acid that might potentially reflux into your uh, esophagus. But the problem with that is it's just making the issue worse. It's the equivalent of taking out a payday loan. Um, yeah, you've got some money in the bank real quick and real soon, but that comes with a thousand percent interest. Good luck paying that off. You know, if you have to do that one time, that's one thing. But if you do that over and over and over and over again, it's going to lead to really, really bad consequences. So I will absolutely 100% grant that proton pump inhibitors and acid suppressing drugs or supplements relieve the symptoms of heartburn. And, you know, once in an extremely great while for an acute case, you know, that may not be such a bad thing, but people use these things chronically. People say, oh, well, you know, I get reflux, so I just take my pills. And that is just a horrible thing because it's not addressing the underlying cause. And as we've seen, too little stomach acid for a long time can lead to all these really bad things. Um, you know, poor nutrient absorption, uh, increase of bacterial infection. One that I didn't mention before is decreased bone density because you're not absorbing enough nutrients from your food to build back up your bones. Um, so again, this is, this is really important to keep in mind. Not all prescription drugs make the problem worse, although we'll talk about those later and the problems that they have. Proton, inhibitor, proton pump inhibitors and acid suppressing drugs and supplements actually make the problem worse. They actually, uh, it's not just neutral. It's not like you're just wasting money. In addition to wasting money, you're actually making your heartburn worse long term. So, uh, so we've talked about a few things. We've talked about the fact that stomach acid is good for you. We've talked about how heartburn is caused by too little stomach acid, how heartburn pills make heartburn worse. We've already talked about uh, a little bit about what causes um, heartburn. I wanna talk a little bit more about some other causes that you may or may not have heard of. So too little stomach acid is the primary cause. Another cause can be something called SIBO, which actually you're much more likely to get as a result of having too little stomach acid, but it can then feed back and be a cause. So it's both, it can be both effect and future cause 
of the issue. So SIBO is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. It's basically where, as a result of excessive fermentation, you um, have too much bacteria in your small intestine. Now, there's supposed to be some bacteria in your small intestine, but not too much. There's supposed to be a lot, uh, the vast majority in your large intestine, but not necessarily in your small intestine. If too much backs up from the large intestine to the small intestine due to excessive fermentation, typically of excess carbohydrates and processed foods, um, that can lead to um, that can lead to heartburn. Another common cause that we discussed before is H. pylori, a very common gut pathogen that uh, is famously known uh, to a lot of people as the main cause of ulcers. It's it, in over ninety percent of du uh, duodenal ulcers. This is the main uh, cause, and it causes uh, roughly 80% of other types of ulcers. So H. pylori, not only can it lead to ulcers, but it can lead to uh, decreased stomach acid production because, again, the way that H. pylori survives is by reducing your stomach acid production. That's the way it survives. Um, and it's no coincidence. It's no coincidence whatsoever that people who have H. pylori tend to have reflux or heartburn. How does that make sense on the current paradigm? How does that make sense uh, when we say that heartburn is caused by too much stomach acid? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense that teenagers have very few instances of heartburn and older people have a lot more instances of heartburn on the current paradigm, which says uh, heartburn is caused by too much stomach acid because as we age, our stomach acid production decreases. That fact makes absolutely no sense when it comes to um, the current paradigm of too much stomach acid. Same thing with H. pylori. So we need to revise the way that we think about uh, heartburn. So you might be asking, after all that, you know, it's it's not uh, it's not the greatest thing to realize that if you have heartburn, the stuff you've been taking uh, isn't necessarily helping. It might be harming the situation. So what can you actually do? What can you actually do to fix this? Well, again, this is really one of the main differences between functional medicine and Western medicine. Western medicine says. Here, here's a pill to fix your symptom, and we're not gonna worry about the underlying cause. That's what heartburn medication is. Functional medicine says, well, you don't get heartburn for no reason. It doesn't just happen. There's some cause underlying that leads to that. And furthermore, functional medicine says stomach acid at a fundamental level is good for you. It's not just there to harm you. It's there to help your body function. So with those two principles, namely that stomach acid is good for you and heartburn doesn't just happen randomly, um, what functional medicine and what functional diagnostic nutrition tend to do is they address the root cause. They look for gut dysfunction in the form of gut pathogens, uh, in the form of small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, in the form of H. pylori. It can also be parasites. It can also be yeast overgrowth. It can also be just a general dysbiosis where in your small intestine, uh, in your large intestine, you're supposed to have a balance of good and bad. Uh, bacteria. You don't want to have any, you know, you don't want to have too much of one or the other. And a lot of people today, due to excess carbon and carbohydrate consumption, have a dysbiosis where they have too much bad bacteria and not enough good bacteria. So that's what you can do to fix the root cause of heartburn long term. Um, this brings up a really important point that I want to share. How many people have you ever met that have successfully gotten off heartburn medication? How many? I've never met a single person. Does that mean they don't exist? No, it doesn't. Uh, there very well may be some, but the people who get off heartburn, or heartburn medication are very, very few and far between. Why? Because the problem gets made worse and worse and worse and be you become more dependent on the drug. You have to take more and more of it to have the same effect and eventually you lose the ability to produce stomach acid. Um, that's what happens if you take the, you know, put a band-aid on the symptom approach. If you take the root cause approach where you, you know, take a, a stool test to find out if you have a gut pathogen or you um, do any one of a number of things, a, a breath test for H. pylori, for example, or for SIBO, um, it takes a little bit more effort up front to figure out what's going on. But in the, in the end, not only have you fixed the symptom, which is heartburn, but you fix the root cause which is you know, SIBO or H. pylori, which can lead to all sorts of other bad health consequences besides heartburn. So if you just focus on the symptom, you're missing the point and you're not really getting it to the root cause. Whereas if you fix the root cause, 
that will also fix the symptom, in this case, heartburn. But many other symptoms as well. We'll, we'll talk about those in future videos. Now, you may be saying, again, well, that's all great, and you know, I'll see if I can find a, uh, a practitioner uh, to work with just by the way here at the gym. Uh, we are able to uh, do these types of uh, tests to find out if, um, if this is the case. Uh, I'm in the process of finishing my certification in functional diagnostic nutrition, and what we're able to do is run these tests for these types of uh, issues to see what's going on and then and then uh, help with the issue as as necessary um, but you might be saying well, that's that's all great and get to the root cause and whatnot but how can I fix my symptoms now like what if you have symptoms now and they're really um, bad and, and you can't fix them how do you fix those symptoms well you could take a proton pump inhibitor you could take a stomach acid drug um, another way to do it which would probably be less harmful, but again, you don't want to do this long term, and you don't want to, um, you know, miss addressing the root cause. Would be an eighth to a quarter teaspoon of sodium bicarbonate, which is something that basically just uh, helps neutralize the stomach acid a little bit two times per day uh, between meals. Now, again, that's just symptom control, but it's symptom control that doesn't really make the problem worse the same way proton pump inhibitors do, and it can be something that's at least uh, an option while you're looking to fix the root cause. Now, with all of this stuff, as always, never change your drug protocol uh, without talking to your doctor first. Don't uh, take on any new treatment protocol or anything like that without talking to your doctor first. Always consult your doctor about you know going off or staying on or pursuing any new protocol. Uh, but these are just some ideas that you can perhaps talk to your doctor about to see if there might be some alternatives for you. All right, guys, so hopefully now, by the end of this video, you have a good sense of what causes heartburn, um, why proton pump inhibitors actually make the problem worse, um, how you can actually get to the root cause, and what you can do temporarily to fix symptoms in a way that doesn't, you know, destroy your ability to produce stomach acid uh, long term. All right, guys, thanks so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.